Oh, for goodness sake, where are my bloody glasses gone now? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you are watching this. This is Sam Prentice Makes Things Happen. I'm Sam Prentice once again, making them happen. And today we are talking about the Creality Ender 5 Plus. So let's get straight on into it, shall we? Here we go. A big thank you to Creality for sending me this printer and keep an eye out as I will be producing several droid related products over the next coming weeks and months using this very machine. And of course, if you happen to have missed my interview with Corey or Dave and Johnny Five on the Creality channel, a link should be appearing now. As always, I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel as I float gently towards being able to monetize this channel, which I hope will mean that I can give free stuff away and afford to do so. So, I would love you to help me with this, so if you can just spare a moment. Have you done it yet? Also, I'd love to hear from you what you think about this 3D printer. It's sort of new to me as I've not had one with a fixed Y axis. So is this a cool Cartesian cube printer without the finesse of it being a Core XY printer? There are some third party upgrades that are available onto the market by companies like K3D and EcoSlide, which should not be ignored. In fact, the latter will be supplying distribution to Europe in the very near future. So what is the end of 5 Plus? Well, coming off it from its successful siblings, the plus points here are the size and several of its features. I can't help but feel that the printer looks for the business and goes together with ease. Released last year and boasting a 350 by 350 by 400, this is merely a replacement for my original S3. But wait, it's a cube without a bed moving backwards and forwards, so the structure and stability is better. Ant Labs lend their successful BL touch into the mix, and the print speed is not to be sniffed at. And the 24 volt Meanwell power supply is also a welcoming approach to quality, but the printer is still very, very noisy due to the Creality motherboard, which unfortunately has fixed stepper drivers. So in order to silence this machine, it's a new board and a hot and steamy session with Marlin. The print quality is really where it matters. And in the first 24 hours of printing, things work really well. However, as I set up for the next big print, I started to notice some stringing. And before I knew it, we had a fail. In this case, I'm not sure where the failure was, but as a precaution, I replaced the nozzle and the Bowden tube. I cannot tell you how much I hate this Bowden setup. Please, Creality, we need direct drives. Stop putting crap on what could be a stunning printer. So during this unboxing, I was actually pretty impressed with the way that it's been wired up. And in fact, that middle box, adding not only stability, but also enclosure, is a really, really well thought out progress. The software that this printer uses uh, is a kind of hybrid. Uh, I don't really like it. There's a bunch of different features on it though, like uh, the hotbed will turn off. There's like an eco mode. And uh, I'm not entirely sure how I feel about that, but it's a good idea. And I think, you know, the way this goes together, if you're a first time user and you're looking for a, a first time 3D printer, this is certainly one that's very, very easy to build. It's actually enjoyable to build as well. Everything's there and ready to go. And Creality have really thought about how this is packed and presented. So well done, Creality, on that point. So there is one thing I want to point out. On the upward struts, they need to be pointing in one certain direction. One of the ones that I put up, which is actually in the top left-hand corner, I didn't put it in right. So basically, I had to take part of it out and put it back together again. So I figured while I could, it might be worth just having a look inside the box to see what was inside of it. And of course, it was nothing of a surprise, really. It was a board and a power supply, amongst other little fans. But the important thing was it was a meanwhile power supply at 24 volt, and I thought we'd just give you a little tour. So the motherboard is a version 2, I believe, with an Allegro set of A4988 stepper drivers on there. And again... You can't replace these, unfortunately. Little dab of hot glue there as well. And the little board to the left is the MOSFET. So here's me just picking off the hot glue. Get rid of that, it's not needed in there anyway. I think by now we all figured out that I was probably going to upgrade this board at some point in the future. So this is for reference. Do you know what? I think it might be time for a montage. Let's get to it. <laughs>
So that's right, you guessed it, we are printing a pitch droid. So he's looking pretty good so far. I'm quite happy with the way that it's come out thus far. There's a few tiny little imperfections, but nothing that can't be sourced with a bit of filler primer and putty. Uh, so keep on following this progress, please. Um, what I will say is the big question that I read online a lot of the time is, should I buy the 5 Plus, the Ender 5 Plus, or the CR10 V2? The problem is, with both of these printers, you're still going to have this Bowden setup. And as I've said before, I really, really hate the Bowden setup. On the V3 of the CR10, you get a direct drive from Creality. So I was hoping that they would send me the version 3 CR10 because of that direct drive, because I really, really wanted to test that out to see if this was going to be kind of like the, one of the ultimate printers. Uh, being that I've been a CR10 fan for such a long time and I've got many of those printers, I've been printed with them for years, I miss the big build volume. You know, people are talking about the Ender 5 Plus as being the big printer, but really the S5 is the big printer. We just need somebody to basically make that size of print bed inside a decent printer and that will take Tronemic stepper drivers, a decent motherboard, good graphical displays, good bed and heat addition and probably some sort of Core XY uh, setup for the kind of stuff that I tend to print. So you never know, there might be somebody out there that I'm talking to right now that uh, might have something to uh, to say about that. So watch this space. Uh, what I will say though is the printer is printing. You know, I've uh, reset it. I've done a couple of things with the uh, with the nozzle and stuff. Uh, I am going to upgrade it. Bottom line, I'm going to upgrade it. Uh, same as what I've done with the uh, CR10 S5s. Uh, and there's more videos coming out with those on how I did that. And, uh, you know, I'm on to my second CR10 S5 with the big tree tech stuff now. Uh, so thank you to Creality for sending me this printer. You know, we will get there in the end, I'm sure. And also thank you to G-Tech, who are basically my PLA sponsors for the filament. Uh, check them out and we will see you soon. Take care.